Okay, uh, my name is Max Painter. I'm the uh, designer and art director of the Ice Kingdom this year uh, for Chill at the Queen Mary. And so, what was the beginning of the process like? Where did you start? We started with the concept. We were given the, uh, the novel uh, A Christmas Carol to get going with. That was our starting concept. And what they wanted to do this year was to try and tell the story with the ice show. Um, so what we started with really was a breakdown of the narrative of the, of the book and also trying to convey the meaning of the book through a variety of different scenes. So what we did, we started with the novel itself and we took the pertinent points of the novel and, and worked out how we could actually make that into a journey that someone walks through, which I don't think has ever been done before. And so once you figured out the narrative and this, the basic components of the story that you wanted to create, hmm visually, what was the next step? We spent a lot of time doing many different drafts of the, the way that someone might walk through this. It was a, it, we, we went through literally 30 or 40 different potential options for the book and certain parts that people know, certain of the iconic parts when Scrooge meets the first ghost for example or uh, Scrooge uh, finds his redemption at the end. So we, we really tried to go through the book and then work out exactly what we wanted to approach and then we started building a layout as a result and what we ended up with doing is to try and really transform the viewer and the audience into the world of Victorian London and so what we've tried to make with this attraction is a very immersive and very winding journey um, so we're, what we're doing is basically transferring the audience very seamlessly from scene to scene in the book so we start off with this beautiful Victorian street at Christmas time where we're introduced to the characters like the Cratchits and Scrooge himself. And then we, we take the viewer on a journey round through the winding streets of London into Scrooge's house and through his encounters with the first and second ghosts. So once you figured out the narrative and the basic structure of, of how you're going to realize this in the space, um, how did you figure out the, the, the details of the actual build? Um, well, that took an awful long time. We had to firstly develop the characters. We had to give the characters sort of faces that people would recognise and, and to try and communicate their personalities and, their, and the traits that people know in America for, you know, Cratchit and uh, Bob Marley. And we really tried to give a really clear face to each of these characters. That was the starting point. We wanted to make sure that, that you know, it's a journey that, that will last a number of minutes for each person, but we want to make sure that people understand what's happening in the book and they understand which characters are which and so we spent a long time developing these characters and also the ghosts and then we we began with the layout options uh, so we we began putting this into paper and we probably got through several hundred sheets of paper just sketching different options of even just how the street would work and how the how the how that such an enormous show could fit in such a small space I mean that was the, the main thing is as you've seen in the tent I mean there's so much stuff and there really isn't any free space available we've just literally had to go and keep refining and and really chiseling it down to the the maximum possible content in the area available and that's been the challenge here and what about the actual calculations for the amount of material that you expected to need for the project uh, how did you figure that out well that's uh, it's when we've developed a, a sort of layout that the client is happy with, we then transfer that to a 3D model. So we start developing the actual walls and the characters and everything in between in 3D space. So we then give that to the artisans themselves. Um, now, we can give a very rough estimate of how many ice blocks we'll need, but Mr. I and Mr. Jin, who are the lead artisans here, um, really have a very good understanding of what they need. They're very experienced. They're from Harbin in China, where they do the most enormous ice show in the world every year. And so for them, this is somewhat second nature. But even then, we've challenged, uh, challenged them a little bit by trying to just increase the amount of, amount of volume of ice in the show and the amount of characters and the amount of just sheer immersive uh, fun going on in there. And what about the logistics of moving all of this material and bringing everybody together? 
How, how is that handled? It's uh, incredibly, it's an enormous back-end process. Uh, it involves hundreds of plane flights. It involves numerous visits across, uh, you know, from, we're, we're in four different continents, the team working on this project. And so it's, it's an enormous collaborative effort. We've got, you know, Skype calls and conference calls going on on a nightly basis to, to arrange it. It really is an enormous logistical operation. We've got the enormous uh, air handling requirements for the show. We've got the ice deliveries that turn up every night with 40-foot trucks delivering thousands of new colors and it's it's an enormous uh, it's an enormous process and, and it's it's quite a thing to behold and you know to get to this point near opening where we've got it all in there and actually carved down into a show it's just it's amazing and it's not just the ice either there's a lot of other of uh, staging sets and things like that objects that have been built for the show how did those come about well those are those are developed externally to the show but they're developed in concert with the show so mm -hmm. there's these massive lantern props made by a different team of artisans in china who are experts in a slightly different uh, type of fabrication they deal with the ancient art of chinese lantern making but they make additional props for the show where for example we might want to hang something from the ceiling or we might want to do something that structurally isn't possible with the ice and it's amazing what is possible with the ice but there's certainly some times where we might want to have a chandelier hanging or something else that needs to be built for the show so in addition to decorating the tent and the internal area of this enormous dome behind me we are we're using these non-ice props throughout the show to just enhance the ambience of the attraction and do you know exactly how many people came last year or how many are expecting this year? Do you I'm not sure of the figures. I think you'd have to ask a Queen Mary, but I do believe it's in the hundreds of thousands and uh, I think they're expecting even more this year. So uh, another challenge entirely comes when you have to get so many people who are excited to see the show to have the same experience we want everyone to have. Right. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you.